That does sound good, huh? Just listen to that. I mean, come on. Hey guys, so welcome to Florida and welcome to the Homestead Miami Raceway. I'm here with BMW USA to test some classic racing cars, but also some classic cars from their collection, like this one right here. This is a 2006 BMW M3 E46, and it is one of my favorite M3s of all time. Now let me tell you why. Back in the day, I used to have an E46 regular 3 Series, and I fell in love with the car, with the driving experience, with the six-speed manual, and especially with the beautiful design. As you can see, this is a very classic car. It's nearly 20 years old, and it still looks fresh, and it looks like a proper BMW. And what I mean by that is the fact that it's got double headlamps, very iconic signature BMW design item. Of course, you have this really small Kini grill, which looks comic in a way today, considering how big the Kini grills are on BMWs, but as you can see, it fits the car's proportions perfectly because this is a very small car. It only weighs a little bit over 3,000 pounds, and I'm gonna tell you more about that as I drive the car. If you move to the side, of course, you also see the nice proportions of the E46 chassis and platform. I'm gonna say it again, it is probably one of my favorite BMW M3s, even though I love the E92 M3 with its V8, but when it comes to the proportions, to the stance, to everything that an M3 stands for, this is my favorite. I know a lot of people love the E30 M3, but to me, this is really the car that stands out the most among all the M3s. Once again, it's a two-door M3. There was no M4 back in the day, so there was an option of M3 Coupe or an M3 sedan. Silver gray color. Absolutely beautiful color, especially under this light. It changes the hues quite a bit. You can see it's a little bit lighter on the top because of the line running across. And then of course, you can see right there, the nice reflection just makes the car really, really pop in this color. Of course, you go to the back, you get the typical BMW L-shaped taillights. They're not elongated as they are currently, but you can see this bulky and nice design of the taillights. Of course, simple badge on the boot. There are not that many M3 badges like you see today on a BMW. A single one, and that's enough to tell you this is a proper sports car. Of course, quad pipes, once again, they're not obnoxious, very small in size, and it sounds really good because this is a six-cylinder engine, and we're gonna take a look at that in a second. Now, if we go around, I'm gonna show a little bit inside before we hop in for a drive. Steering wheel, it's not straight because we positioned the car for the shots, but you can see right there, six-speed manual, classic design, driver orientation, nice leather seats. Of course, you got 66,000 miles, so the car has been driven. It's not perfectly new, but it's still in very, very good condition. Now, let me pop the hood. All right, so let's take a look at the engine bay. I'll tell you more about this. I keep forgetting about this old school way of opening. So this is the iconic S54 3.2 liter, six cylinder, naturally aspirated engine. So this is why I'm excited about this one. Makes about 333 horsepower and 268 pounds feet of torque. You could have spec the engine with a six speed manual like this car or with the SMG2. You can see a nice brace right here to keep things tight and in place. Of course, that helps quite a bit when you drive the car on some dynamic roads. Very clean bay, so I love how BMW kept this very, very pristine. Looks really, really nice, and I'm assuming it will drive just as good. So with that being said, let me close this up. Now I'm gonna hop in for a drive. I'm gonna tell you what the car can do, even though it's quite flat in Florida, so I don't expect a lot of driving dynamics today. But I will pick up Bill Oberlin a little bit later today after my drive, and I'm gonna let Bill tell me more about the car because he's kinda started his career with this car, won a bunch of championships on the E46 platform. So I'm excited to see what he can tell us about the car. So don't go anywhere because this will be a very exciting video. Let's see how the car takes off. Ready? Let's do this. Eight thousand RPM. Here we go. So good. So, RPM band up to eight thousand, which is unbelievable. And you can hear the engine sound. I mean, first of all, the engine is marvelous, right? But the engine sound of the naturally aspirated unit. Oh my God, it's so good. I forgot how good it is. It 
it's a great sounding engine it's very smooth very silky and it goes really well with the six speed manual i mean i've been driving manuals quite a bit lately but there is nothing compared to this maybe maybe in the 1m but certainly not in the newer models that BMW makes. There is something about the connection between this engine, the chassis, the suspension, the steering, and the six-speed manual that makes this overall package extremely compelling. Speaking of steering, nicely weighted, a lot of feedback coming from the road. It's one of those cars where you just point whatever you wanna go and the car will simply follow. As I said before, they don't make it like this anymore. The hydraulic steering system, it's a marvelous piece of engineering as well. And something that reminds me of the old good days of cars. The six-speed manual, very nice also. Shifts are very precise. The clutch feels a little bit heavy, maybe because I'm not used to it. I'm used to the newer generation of BMW M cars. But once you get a hang of it, it's just so easy and effortless to shift. So nice that sound so nice the linear power delivery of the s54 works really well with the natural balance of the e46 and speaking of the balance the car has nearly a perfect weight distribution of 50 50. the e46 m3 weighs a little bit over 3,000 pounds i believe 3,300 pounds so fairly lightweight compared to modern bmws and speaking of that you can see how the car rolls nicely into this corner very composed i mean that chassis is so stiff i can feel the front end being quite stiff as well you've seen that bar underneath the hood it keeps the engine nice and tight in there and now of course straight line performance oh my god that 8000 rpm band it's addicting it's so addictive so good so good of course it's more than just the engine and the chassis and suspension when it comes to the e46 m3 it's the overall package it is a nice combination of the classic design inside the car very analog but also with a little bit of modern touches for 2006 so you have this tiny screen right here a navigation screen of course it's not touch screen so you might be inclined to actually push on the screen but that's not going to work and essentially you operate everything through those buttons right there so if you're into this very analog very old and classy look of a bmw then this car will certainly speak to you speaking of old school and classy design here this three spoke steering wheel absolutely beautiful design of course it's not as thick as you would see in newer bmw m cars and that's okay because i actually prefer this it's so nice to hold on to it and of course it's really nice to drive with it as well even now going on some maybe not extremely perfect roads i can feel the suspension and the road through the steering wheel so there is a lot of feedback coming from the road and especially when you're trying to corner and you push the car a little bit harder you just point and that hydraulic steering it's so good doesn't need a lot of intervention essentially hold it keep the car on the road and now push out of the corner oh my god here we go, 6,000 RPM. It's just a rocket, unbelievable. So addictive. I can only imagine taking this car on the track or taking this car on some really nice and curvy bands. It will absolutely put a smile on your face as you see it on mine right now. This car, it's all about the connection with the driver. It's all about maintaining that driver orientation at all time not just by design but also by the driving experience even as i'm driving on these straight roads i can feel that suspension working the pavement quite well you can feel everything from the road through the tires through the steering column and that's a completely different feeling that you're getting from any other newer m3 and m4 which tend to be a little bit more numb of course the car rattles quite a bit it's not your mother of bmw and that's okay because i feel connected with the car at all the time 
there is no fake sound inside the cabin so everything you're hearing comes from the actual exhaust and from the engine again another nice departure from modern bmws I'm still surprised that the car really hasn't appreciated that much in value in the last few years. Of course, the prices have gone up quite a bit, but not at the level of an E30, for example. Of course, that car comes with a vast motorsport pedigree, so that helps quite a bit. Of course, it's a highly sought investment car, if you want to call it that way, especially it was during COVID times. But I have a feeling that in the future, the E46 M3 will get up there as well, because when it comes to the driving experience, when it comes to the overall package, it is still a modern car by today's standards. It's a car that you can daily drive. It's a car that you can take to the track. And it's absolutely a car that you can take to the canyons and have some fun. While the E30 M3, maybe it's not your ideal daily driver, it's still a very fun weekend car and potentially a fun track car as well. But the E46 M3, it's really an overall good package of a daily driver. So honestly, I feel like if you're looking for a M3, you don't want to spend the money of a V8 E92, then I would say the E46 M3 might be the best value proposition today, especially if you can find one with a fairly low miles on the odometer. So with that being said, this was a quick review of the car. Now I'm gonna pull into the Homestead Miami Raceway. I'm gonna pick up Bill Oberlin. You know, he's a legend when it comes to BMW Motorsport. And I'm gonna have him tell me a little bit about the car and what he thinks of it because he's won quite a few races with the E46 M3 GTR. So he's got a good comparison between the road car and the racing car. So stay tuned. Ah, my old favorite. Look at this bad boy. Hey, Bill. <laughs> Ready to go for a ride? Oh, yeah. All right, you're driving. A lot of memories in this thing. All right, let's see what he can do. This poor car is never going to be the same. All right. Wait, is that a clutch? Buckle it. It is a clutch. How do you how do you use a clutch? Buckle this in. We'll find out in a second, huh? <laughs> this will work it out. <laughs> All right, Bill, so you literally just got off the track with the E46 M3 GTR, right? And now we're going into the road version of the car. Isn't that funny? You know, so I started my BMW career with an E36 and I thought it was incredible, right? And then came the E46 and it was the best car you could ever have. Yeah. It was the perfect balance of handling, you know, traction, power. You always wanted more power, but the handling was so good. This car connected with me on a lot of levels. So, meant, so much so that I won championship after championship in this car, so it has a big place in my heart. Did you have a chance to drive a road version before you even got into the racing car? No, never. Do you never. know that? So you went straight to the racing car? I went straight to Texas World Speedway and jumped in an E36, and that was the... F well, you know what? That's not true. I had... but I forgot about this completely. I had a 325E as my street car. Okay. So I did have a BMW, So and I did whip that thing around the streets at the speed limit, mind you, everywhere I went, right? So so I guess we'll find out in this video how the, to compare, because honestly, BMW keeps telling this, you know, the BMW M tells you a story that, you know, it's the road to the track transfer and vice versa. We're building the cars for the track, but you can drive like on the road. So I guess this is a good comparison. Of course, the cars are not identical, right? But I'm curious to see if we can find any similarities in between the two cars, because you literally just got off the track. Oh yeah. The thing was, this is the car that, that was the baseline for BMW that everybody historically said, oh, the E46, the E46. Yep. This was the one that set the bar, the benchmark. I mean, it's, to me, it's just so analog. I just had a chance to drive it before I picked you up. And honestly, so analog. It reminds me of the old school M3s. You know, I do love the E92 M3 with the V8. It's a great car. But honestly, this one is just so, so analog, so classic. And you see as we drive, we can make a left here. And there is a long straight and you can push it. I mean, that 8,000 RPM, to me, it's addictive because I'm not in race cars like you are. But I'm curious to see what you think about that. Oh, that sound, huh? That does sound good, huh? Just listen to that. I mean, come on. So good. So, so good. It does sound. It sounds exactly like what I just drove. It. <laughs> Except I had open mufflers and 
Didn't rev it much higher. Bad. I mean, you, this one, what are we going, eight grand? Our race cars, yeah. when we pushed them to the max, we were at 8,600, right? 8,600, okay, so not that far off. Not that, but we increased the stroke. So the piston gotcha. velocity was mega fast, right? Gotcha. So that's what we were worried about. So tell me more about that car. I mean, what kind of mods were also done on the racing car? I mean, oh, clearly it's completely different. Yeah, you know, the chassis is the chassis. We take it right off the production line and uh, then we put a roll cage in it. Suspension was just a, an updated version, slightly different geometry, different springs, massive brakes. At the time we had PFC calipers, okay. PFC brakes, and different versions of our car had ABS. Some had ABS, some didn't. I love the ABS, it was awesome. <laughs> But uh, and we had a Hewland straight cut gearbox because you needed something that could take 24 hours and just beat it up and, and abuse it and take it. So, but just driving this car, I thought in my memory it felt you, your mind always tells you something was faster than it was. Do you remember yeah. that when you were yeah. a kid? Yeah, this is actually faster than I remembered it being. It actually when is because when I drove it a little bit too, I was like, hmm, I don't remember to be uh, you know that fast. And it what what does it make? Is it's it 333 horsepower. Oh, now that ex that explains. I mean, it, yeah, it it's just, not bad. I mean, for a car in 2006, I mean, it's the greatest. I mean, it just takes off. I mean, honestly, it literally takes off. Smooth as can be. This and you know what I love the most? There is no fake sound in the car, like nah. all the new M car, this is it, this is what you're getting straight from the pipes. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And it's the right amount of sound. It's not overbearing. That's a great car. We yeah. need to put this on a racetrack. We should, huh? Yes. I think they're going to have to pay for tires. Then. Well, that's, that's... <laughs> So tell me about your first win, right? So E46 M3 GTR, tell me what that felt like. You know, where was it? Where was it? Where was it? I don't know where it was. You don't remember, no. huh? You I, won too many races, that's the problem. <laughs> I went to Texas World Speedway, my first race with BMW, yeah. and BMW hadn't won a race yet, and my objective was, let's win this first race for BMW. They yeah. went through a whole year, they had a lot of teething problems, but they were on the cusp of winning. And I came in at just the right moment. It's a long story about, but it's a crazy story. I think I've told you this, right? I've heard that in different video, but not everybody's seen that one, okay. but I think I remember it. Tell me one. I was teamed up with a guy named Matt Cohen. I okay. thought I was going to be with Pete Halsmer, okay. and because that was, the I think, the first union car, very famous car. And then I'm like, nope, wasn't in that car. Then I thought I would be with, I think, John Paul Jr. might have been in the other car. And uh, and it was the Valvoline car. My name wasn't on that car. And I'm like, huh, <laughs> that's weird, because I had a very fast Mazda at the time. We were winning a lot of races. BMW, we made an agreement. They brought me over. They wheeled a car out of a fifth wheel trailer and it was just a customer named Matt Cohen. Brand new BMW and I drive it. It was my first time in Texas World and I thought, this is the best handling car, stopping. And immediately I was like, oh, this thing is, this is me. Yeah. This is what, if you've ever tried to understand what you were designed to do as a human, you know, you might have been the best fighter pilot. You don't know because you haven't done it, right? Who knows? Who knows? <laughs> I sat in this BMW and go, this is what I was made to do, right? I was made to drive this car. Except I'm going down the straightaways and I'm going very slow yeah. compared to the factory cars. And yeah. I tell this Matt Cohen kid, I go, hey, why are we so slow in a straight line? He goes, well, we have, whoa, that was a big pull chain. Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we have a three liter motor. The factory cars have three twos. And I said, well, that's not going to work. And he, I go, do you have that motor? He says, no. I said, what happens if this motor blows up? And he says, um, uh, Tom Milner, by the way, does not know this story. <laughs> so, but it's, it's gone, enough time's gone on, it could be unclassified. Um, he says, they have to give me one of their motors. I said, you got to blow this thing up. And he goes, how do you do that? I said, just go down the street and stick it in the wrong gears. <laughs> and it'll eventually has to come unglued. Yeah. He has, I mean, Texas World Speedway is a massive racetrack. He can blow yeah. this thing up anywhere. Where does he pick to do it? On the front straight in front of everybody. <laughs> and he goes from fifth, he's going to pull six, and he goes to like third, second. <laughs> it shrieks so high that I'm like, oh my God. And sure enough, parts start falling out of it, right? On their way down the straightaway. <laughs> They'll do it. And they all do it eventually, right? We can't do it now with the paddle shift stuff, but back then, yes. So what happens? They put a 3.2 liter motor in, next practice, I'm P1. And we are looking good. Qualifying comes, the differential breaks, I qualify dead last, right? So that's where I start the race from, but I'm yeah. super happy we have a good car. Race starts, I get to the lead, and I'm leading the race, and I thought, wow, this is awesome. Matt Cohen was gonna get in, he wasn't quite gonna have the pace, and he was gonna drop back, but at least I got an opportunity to show myself. Yeah. This was the day of IMSA when your lead driver would wait 
and he would pick which car was doing the best and he could get ah, in it. Okay. I come in for my pit stop, I get out, who gets in my car? Pete Halsmer. <laughs> and I'm like, this is awesome. They have the faith that we can go and win their first yeah. race. The differential blows up again, we don't win, but the, the precedent was set. And now they hired me full time, off we go to Sears Point, and we, it was Boris said, myself and Pete Halsmer, and we finished one, two, three. Amazing. I was told to finish second, so I finished second. <laughs> Somewhere down the road, Team I won. Well, it was. I mean, that car was so good, I got along with it really well, right? So um, that was that's how my thing started with E36. Then they introduced the E46, and uh, it was even better. It was spectacular. I mean, there's photos of me flying that thing in the air, and just. You, you could do no wrong with this car. This yeah. car, even though you got it completely over the top, sideways, going crazy, it always came back to you, right? And uh, and then we won race after race, and I even raced the four-door version of the M3, and yeah. we won the championship in that, and won races in that. Yeah, So awesome. you've driven them all, right? So if you were to pick your favorite M3 non-race car, which one would it be? Well, hold on a second. I'm not kidding. A lot of times we look back in history, but history is not always the fastest. Yeah. The new M3, M4 that came out that is now four-wheel drive yeah. is is the sickest car I've ever driven streetcar on a racetrack, ever. Really? I drove it in Sears Point, yeah. and I have a hard time finding grip in our race car at Sears Point, so it's never, it hasn't been my favorite track in a little while. I just went to a BMW event, drove that four-wheel drive M3, M4, take your pick, and ripped it around there, and I swear to God, I was going faster than in my race car. It's what it felt like to me. It was unreal, you know. And you have now you have MDM, dynamic stability control, all kinds of things that are that just turn. They when you get in that car, literally BMW puts a cape on your back that says Superman, and you can go completely crazy. And it was really fun. It took me, it probably took me a session to have the faith in the car of what it could do. And then by the end, I ripped it for two days and just, you would think I would say I shredded the tires off it, but because it was so balanced front to rear with the, the traction and the four wheel drive, it's not even hard on tires. And it's not a lightweight car, but it's super fast. And out of all the racing cars that you've driven, uh, which one is your favorite? Okay, so that this, this used to be an easier question until I've driven 100 BMWs, right? <laughs> Now you have to like section them, right? The LMR was a work of art yeah. and it was built to do one thing, go win Le Mans and do it super fast. It was built by Williams and it had that BMW V12 engine in it mm -hmm. and there was nothing faster. It was amazing speed wise, handling wise, yeah. it would pull your head off, great. E92 M3 is probably the most fun car you're ever gonna drive. Yeah. The BMW V8 GTR was just world sure. domination. It was so ahead of its time in its class, it only was allowed to race one year and then kicked out. Yeah. But we could literally beat the Corvettes ahead of us. We just always held back every race. And we were probably three seconds a lap faster than we ever showed. That's nice. how good that car was. Yeah, and you've been testing here quite a few cars too. So I've seen you race here the MA GT LM. You've done also the E92 M3. Of course, you've done the E46 M3 GTR. Did you have a chance to do the 2002 Alpine also? Uh, no, but I've driven no. that car quite a you lot. Have, yeah. That is, you know, that thing speaks to you from a history standpoint. Yeah. When you drive it, it handles really good. It's fairly slow because it's got a small little engine, yeah. but it just, for some reason, you come off a corner and you just, you got this steering wheel. It's not quick, but you're trying to race all the Camaros like you yeah. did in the day. And uh, it just, it's a piece of history for sure. So this car, what do you think of it? I mean, because honestly, this one has not blow up in value yet. So I feel like it's still understated. I feel like it's going to be a future classic, but prices are still kind of on the normal side. A good entry level M3 for somebody that wants to get into the M brand. Awesome. But when it comes to uh, financial advice, I'm not your guy. <laughs> I'll tell you, I raced Le Mans okay. in like 1999. Yeah. I raced a McLaren F1 long tail GTR, right? Yeah. Which we all know now the value of these cars. So uh, the race is over and the McLaren now is, oh man, so the McLaren is now obsolete. Uh, so nobody wants it, right? Because yeah. the Toyota came with their GT prototype car yeah. 
the bar, uh, yeah. the LMR was there, the LM from BMW was there. It was it was no good, right? So I raced the EMI Records car, famous car, you know, good car. Yeah. Uh, it comes up for sale in I think On Track magazine or Auto Week or something, and I'll swear it was three hundred grand, <laughs> right? And my dad goes, "Oh, you should buy, you should buy this McLaren F1. It's like two hundred ninety-five thousand yeah. dollars, three hundred thousand dollars." I go, "Who?" would buy this car for that much money. Are they crazy? <laughs> what are they now, $20 million? $20 million. Yeah, so million. do not take financial <laughs> advice from me, but I would say this car is awesome to buy all day long. There's never a person who owns this car that doesn't love this car. Nobody can say they don't like it. I mean, the natural aspirate engine is just amazing. I mean, you saw it on the straight line. I mean, even on the straight line, it's fun, right? I mean, oh, you yeah. can imagine what you can do on some curvy canyon. What, what is know? top speed on this car? Honestly, I don't know. I mean, honestly, it's got to be 155 probably. I was, but I'll, but I'll double check. I'm not sure. Because right, it feels I, like it's going to pull for a yeah, while. Yeah, it I'd does like pull to... quite hard. So we can make a right back into the track. So before we get to the track, let me ask you this. Do you have a favorite song? Uh, my song changes, right? I'm, I'm, uh, shoot, I want to say prostitute, but that's not the right <laughs> word. My thing about music is I love great, loud precise perfect music right for the situation I have a boat I have insane music I love to have dance parties around the boat so that being said I will play what makes the people vibe and that becomes my song of the day sometimes let's call it techno sometimes it's country sometimes it's um, uh, like rock it can be a lot of times when I want to chill it'll be like Eagles music right and when I go off-roading I play something that's more mellow so that I don't become a maniac a hundred miles away from home and break suspension off the car, which you get too motivated, yeah. you could do that. But so here's why I'm asking. Yeah. Someone told me that you're very good at singing karaoke in cars. You know that is a total <laughs> lie. That is. <laughs> look, Someone said you were the man to do this, so I was like, I'm gonna ask Bill yeah. for his favorite song, and then no he's way. gonna try to. <laughs> no way. First of all, I have tried to. I know you're good at it. Though. Oh yeah, you know. I have tried to accidentally sing in the shower at home, and my girlfriend probably looks around the corner and thinks somebody's dying, you know? See? So that's a no. That's a hard pass on the well, Carol. Wait, guess. I'll do it right after you. Oh, you're, you're probably no, a great singer. In, in, between my terrible voice, my accent, and I have no musical ear, dude. It oh, yeah. is absolutely horrible. Well, you don't want to hear me we sing. We should both sing then, and it would uh, not be good. I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to let you lead on this one. So, yeah. Like, anything you want to give me a couple of beats? No, you know? no, no. I, listen, I would. This, this is where you draw the line? Yeah, man. <laughs> I wish I could sing. I, I watch people sing, and they got these great voices, and I'm like, well. <laughs> Can't yeah. be good at everything. Can't be good though, at everything. Exactly. I'm, very, I'm good at very few things. Right. Let's put it that fair, way. Fair enough. But I'll, uh, but I'll give you a chance to redeem yourself later today because maybe we're gonna drive the M8s together. Awesome. And then uh, I'll give you a chance to think about a good song, something, easy song, something I can. You, hum, know, you can even be a kid song. Doesn't matter. But it's got to be something though. So you got a couple of hours to come up with. You're something. trying to get those views, aren't you? <laughs> you really, you really trying to. Do you that. think that's Bill Oberlin singing in cars. Oh yeah. <laughs> This would be so bad. <laughs> that would be a cool one. It would be. <laughs> well, Bill, thanks so much for the ride. I really appreciate it. Um, I might get a ride with you on the track also. Yeah, I, I haven't been in that E46 M3 in a while, but it's a fantastic car. Just had a chance to be in the Z4 GTLM, which was also fantastic, which I know you love that car quite oh, a bit. Yeah. So there's so many fantastic race cars in the history of the brand. So as always, thanks for your time, Bill. I really appreciate it. Have fun on the track today. Always a good time here at Homestead. Always a good time. And I'll pick you up in a couple you. of hours after you're out of the MA GTLM. I'll pick you up with an MA competition coupe and then let's talk about that car because that's completely different than anything totally else. Totally different car. I love it. Thanks. Well, guys, thanks for watching and uh, we'll see you in the next video.